I just want to step away from the actual match action right now and talk about an interview that caught uh, my eye this weekend. And producer Dan and I were talking about this. John Norcross in the Times interviewing um, this Phil Jones. Now, Phil Jones, th this you'll have seen on social media comments that came from this interview. But but this criticism from Rio Ferdinand is the very interesting one. So it's about injury torment abuse in the streets and online uh, and, and his anger about this. Now the reason I want to do this is let's take it through from the beginning. When Phil Jones joined Manchester United from, from Blackburn he was hailed and, and in fact by certain figures at Old Trafford as potentially being another Duncan Edwards. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson said he's arguably the way he's looking could be our best ever player. I think Jones may be one of the best players we've ever had no matter where we play him. At 21 years of age he's going to be a phenomenal player. I think he can play anywhere on the pitch. Right. So he came in, but he was already injured. He had a meniscus problem, and he was already playing with a bit of an injury there. Now, contrast that with what we see today. Abuse, vilification, ridicule. Look at this. He's still on Man United's payroll. Crazy. This was in reference to something that was said by Rio Ferdinand, the pundit, who, you know, he, he went out and said he's a waste of a space in the squad. Now, Phil Jones said, I can take abuse, I can take misunderstanding, but I needed to clear this up. So he has now come back into training, and after a 20-month injury layoff, he is back involved in football again. John, I'll let you come in in a minute just on this one. His knee injury, I need you to explain this to me. He has a meniscus problem that means that he has none of it there. He's had bone on bone, and it eventually got to the point where his knee locked up, right? So he's had 454 days out, missed 78 games. He went to Spain to the famous Dr. Kuga, where he had micro fractures done to his knee. What does that mean? Uh, he has little areas in, uh, in his knee where they attach uh, uh, the meniscus and the meniscus gets to attach onto the bone as mm. well um, to provide sh uh, shock absorb uh, absorption. Um, it also means that when you have that treatment, you can't do anything. It's not, it's not an area, it's not something you can strengthen. Mm. You've pretty much just got to rest rest, rest again, eat clean and rest again. And for a guy like Phil Jones, it'd be very difficult because he's naturally quite a big boy mm. to keep the weight off. And he would have, you know, ever since he could walk, he's been kicking the ball, playing football. So to be inactive would yeah. be really difficult. And, you know, the mental strain would be, would be intolerable. Well, that's intolerable, something that he's sure. spoken about. Let's just quickly hear from uh, F F Phil Jones and what he had to say about it before, Mark, I bring you in on this one. He talked about what happened, and there you go, John. He said, I'd lost my mind completely. I'm thinking, I'm finished. Can't be bothered with all this anymore. I went to the, the doc and said, enough's enough. I've had too many anti-inflammatories, too many injections, too many close shaves. I need this sorted. Now, this was before he went to Spain and had some fairly radical surgery. Mark, the thing about this was that Phil was playing with such a bad injury. Uh, he said that even when Jose Mourinho first took over, he was playing effectively about six 60% fit and there were players who were saying what are you doing because his knee was just constantly swollen up there were you aware of the extent of his injuries because apparently Rio Ferdinand said something about him being a waste of a squad space and claimed that he didn't know about this this serious injury well I knew that he had injuries and I knew he had long-term injuries because you know you just look at his record in itself um, the extent of it no I didn't know um, someone like Rio Ferdinand you would think he would know better um, he would have better contacts at United. I know he's always very outspoken about th all things Manchester United. Mm. I, I also think his comments were out of order. I, I thought they were really in poor form and in poor taste, attacking a player of, you know, Phil Jones as, as, as I, I think, stature within the, within the club at Manchester United. Um, and to say that he's taking up a space and wasting a space, I thought was very, very harsh and, and, and wrong of him to do so. Oh, let's just go into that. We can come back to the injury thing in a little while because I still want to get into the, the, the mental scars that this is going to leave on, on Phil Jones. But this is what Rio said. He said he's taken up a youth team player's position. He's had too many injuries. He should have gone ages ago. He should have gone before Chris Smalling went. He should have gone to a new club and just found some form and played some football. Right, so that, that's just clarifying what was said. And Mark and John have both had their saying. This was Ilkay Gundogan talking about injuries. And he said, this was really interesting. When he recovered from his ACL, the feeling is loneliness. The worst thing for me is seeing other players. I see them on the training field, the locker room, when they go to the group meeting. I see them in the gym and I can't do the same. You're not able to be a full part of the group. That's the most difficult thing, to feel you are useless, not worth as much as the others. John, give me your take on this one. You, like any other professional, would have suffered injuries. I remember talking to ex-Liverpool players who said that uh, going back to the Shankly days, he would treat you as a pariah because you were no good to him when you were injured. And, and yeah. it really affected people mentally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on this continent because of, because of uh, long-term injuries. Mm. Um, I, we were called outriders. We weren't even called by a name. You certainly weren't called by a squad numbers, very old school. Mm. Uh, and hey, outrider, that's it. 
that's that's all it is what sort of shape are you in outrider and that would that would be it and um you'd feel you'd feel terrible and a lot of your teammates so you were made off with you. made to feel almost guilty for being injured yeah because you can't get back in time and then what happened especially if you're a young player and that would have been the, the case with phil jones he would have been so keen on playing and, and taking taking to the training ground that he would rush back and you end up not being completely honest with a lot of the physios you certainly if mm -hmm. someone like alex ferguson came to you and said I want, I want to play you next week. Can you, can you train on Wednesday? Mm. Phil Jones, who, I'm sure he'd just nod his head and say, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. So that's why Even he exacerbated he the injury by playing when he shouldn't have done. Mark, the other thing, of course, is, you know, Phil Jones spoke about the pain this caused him at home and how he used to cry and his wife had to take on the burden of stuff at home. But what about his professional reputation? That's the other thing here. You know, criticism from, from, from professionals as well. That, that adds to it as well. He said, I found it hard. You know, the guy in the street who swears at me, I was able to rationalise that one, but... When it was fellow professionals working as pundits, that's what he found he really was upset about. Yeah, I can, I can fully understand it because he should know better. Rhea Ferdinand should know better before, before saying things like that. You know, he really should have informed himself, which he's more than capable of doing, having the connections. But he, he wasn't the only started. one, was he? Because Phil Jones has been subject to a lot of criticism from all quarters for some time now. Um, yeah, but not necessarily directed about him taking up a space and wasting everyone's mm. time and wasting mm. uh, you know, the club's money and the position uh, in the squad. I, I, I don't think there's many players out there that are just happy to sit around when they're fit and not play a game at all and just be part of a, a club. There's not many people around that are like that. Very, yeah. very few. Yeah. There had to be another reason. So it doesn't take you being Einstein to work that out. Yeah, OK, I fully get that. Well, let's just have a look at some of the criticism that did come his way because it was a really good interview, the Norcross interview. Try and find it if you can. Um, th th look at this on, on, on social. Phil Jones, why is he there coming in here? You know, Phil Jones remained as our number four, sadly. Now, he cancelled all of his social media some years ago. Get Phil Jones off your books. He said he, he, he deleted every single social media app he had. He tried to avoid it. Um, and he said, in the society we're living in at the moment, all the racism and stuff that affects mental health, I'd just be careful. I'd just say be careful. You don't know how it's going to affect players, physically, mentally, emotionally. We always go back to the same point. Ah, oh, they're footballers. They should be able to deal with that. They get so much money. They have this lavish lifestyle. But take all that away. Strip all that back. And we're just human beings. Mental health and, 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 and problems that you'll, you'll have seen it firsthand. You might have suffered it yourself when there's criticism. I mean, I, I do go online and I just think, wow, would you say that to a colleague? Would you say that to someone you actually know? It, it, it's, it's a very brutal um, form of criticism, isn't it? Because there's so much distance between the troll and the victim. It, it's a strange one because, um, you know, when I, came, when I came in the studio and you told me about what Rhea Ferdinand said, I wasn't aware of it. And then it was, this is the first time I actually saw the quote in its entirety. Uh, it's, it's pretty shocking, as Mark says, coming from look a fellow pro. Look, I can understand from, from non-players, players who are not, who's never been close to being a professional mm. footballer. I can understand it, but not from, not from former pros, not from someone who's played in his position mm. and at the same club and understands what it means to be in that red shirt. And also, you know, to become a professional footballer, to become a professional footballer, especially at that elite level, especially for a club like Manchester United, mm. The mental strength it would take would be incredible. So Phil Jones, he would be able to put up with non-professional non, uh, footballers, non-athletes yeah. having a go at him. He would actually, he would actually get on his, he would actually get on uh, into the gym, and he would press on. He would use it as fuel. Mm -hmm. But when Rio Ferdinand comes and says that, and l lest we forget, Rio Ferdinand's had his problems with injuries as well. Yeah, yeah. He's had, he's had a lot of problems, major problems with his lower back. To come out and say that. Mm. Um, Oh, I'm well, flabbergasted. Yeah, you've both had your say on that one. I mean, Mark, let, let's just round this one up. You know, um, Phil Jones, very interestingly in the piece, said that one time he was walking along the street with his three-year-old daughter and some guy comes by and just swears at him and the daughter could kind of understand what was being said. But he said getting rid of social media was, was a no-brainer for him. Would you, would you advise players today to, to keep clear of social media? Um, well, advise it. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, full stop. Um, would I advise it? Um, I think it's something that certainly affects players. Um, my, my last couple of, my last season at Leicester, oh, I just was blown away by the change in players' behaviour post-training, post-matches, and how instantaneously, the minute they walk in that door, they're on their phones. They're all either posting, reading what's been said about them, and it just amazed me. Um, and and I, I find that, that that is unhealthy. And all the other people that are on there, they're making these comments. It's it's nothing to them because mm. they're, they're they're hiding. They're not real. They're not their real profiles. They're not real people. They're people behind it. 
but they're hiding. And it's easy to say whatever you want to say to people. They don't care about the ramifications.